guys, my name's Jalen. So today I thought I'd film a book haul. This is only my second video, so I'm still feeling a bit nervous about filming. So I apologise for messing up people's names or giving quite vague descriptions, but we'll just go with it, see how it goes. Most of these books are from charity shops. Uh, there's only like a couple here that I've bought brand new. Also four of them I have already read and they'll be in my wrap up. So the first book I have for you is A Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Um, I've actually already read this, I read this last month, so it won't be in my wrap up, but I really enjoyed this. And for those that don't know, it follows Dorian Gray, who has a portrait of himself. He wishes that he never grows old, so the portrait ages instead of him as his soul darkens the portrait gets more and more grotesque. I really enjoyed this actually. Oscar Wilde is probably one of the most quotable authors that you could find. I also look well one of my favourite plays is The Importance of Being Earnest so I pretty much knew I was gonna love this and I was looking for something fairly gothic and this this pretty much hit all the right notes. So I do highly recommend this I really enjoyed it. The next four books are ones that are going to be in my wrap up so if I do them now then it gets them out of the way. The first one I got is a graphic novel and that is Saga Volume 1. This one has been on my radar for a while, obviously it's really popular and really well known. So I finally decided to pick it up because usually, I mean I haven't been buying a huge amount of graphic novels recently and I just really wanted something to get me back into it. So this is by uh, Brian, K. Brian K. Vaughan even, and Fiona Staples. So it's about these two people on the front, they're from opposite, opposite sides in a war and they fall in love and have a baby. So they're just trying to find their place in the world where these two races, I would say, just absolutely hate each other. It has sci-fi, fantasy, politics, you know, pretty much anything you could want. I imagine you could probably find it in this series. This is only, like I said, this is only the first book, so I've still got a few more to go yet, so. So the next book I have is 24 Hour Party People by Tony Wilson. This is a film also. I believe this book was written after the film. So this, this is pretty much just based on the film. A lot of the dialogue is lifted from the film, which is great if you really loved it, which I really like. The, I really like the movie. It's one of my favorites. Um, so 24 Hour Party People is about factory records and the rise and fall of the Hacienda Club in Manchester. And Tony Wilson himself was the one of the founders of factory records. I believe this is part fiction, part biographical. So the, our writer Tony Wilson, he, uh, he was a TV presenter at, Gran at Granada and he went to a Sex Pistols gig when they were first starting. I think there were like 14 people there and that inspired him to seek out new music. He uh, helped establish Joy Division, which later became New Order, and also The Happy Mondays. So it's a really interesting book if you're interested in music and also the film is really good. So like I said, you should, you should definitely check out the film if, you, if you're not, you know, if you don't want to dedicate time to reading this because the film is really funny it's so bizarre you wouldn't believe half the stuff that happens but i can almost guarantee that i bet it did okay the next book i have is bloody chamber by angela carter so this is a collection of short stories based on different fairy tales and legends i keep seeing this spouted as a collection of feminist retellings of these stories but in the book itself, Angela Carter said that she didn't see these as retellings and as original stories that were based on these. All of these stories are given a very dark, gothic, feminist edge. So you've got the Bluebeard story for the Bloody Chamber, you've got Puss in Boots, you've got Beauty and the Beast, you've got Red Riding Hood, and then you've got another story including vampires. So yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about this one in my wrap up. Spoiler alert, I absolutely loved it. Uh, I can't wait to read this again. I think it'll be perfect for October. The last book I have that I've read 
that I'll be talking about in my wrap up as well is Jade City by Fonda Lee. So this is a world where Jade gives people almost superhuman abilities but only certain people can actually wield it. It's a very highly sought after commodity so a lot of people kill for it, steal it and smuggle it. There's a new drug that surfaced which allows regular people to be able to actually use it. it the, the story mainly focuses these two clans that are warring with each other, the No Peaks and the Mountains. The way I've seen it described is the Godfather with martial arts. So it's then that's very accurate for this book. So I'm definitely looking forward to talking about this more in my wrap up because this was another one that I really enjoyed. Okay, the next book I have, I am actually currently reading. I'm hoping to have it done by the time I film my wrap up. And that is The Lost World by Michael Crichton. So I read Jurassic Park about a month ago and I really enjoyed it. It's very different from the film, but not in a bad way. It's very interesting to see how the characters were originally intended. So I enjoyed it so much I had to pick this up pretty much straight away. It's just taken me a while to get through because I've read quite a lot so far this month and I'm in a bit of a slump at the moment, but I'm getting through it ever so slightly. So this is slightly different from the second film, um, from what I'm gathering so far. So we're following uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm. It's the same sort of basic premise that as far as they know, all the dinosaurs that were, all the, all the dinosaurs and the original site have been destroyed, but they found a site B and they suspect that something or some things have survived. I'll be interested to see how this one plays out. So the next book I have is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. So it's set in a world where it's impossible to die naturally. There's no illness, so only scythes can bring about death. And it follows these two apprentices, Sintra and Rowan. They have to learn how to kill and deal with the responsibility of choosing who to kill. Unfortunately, only one of them actually gets to, I assume, graduate from being an apprentice. So the winner has to kill the loser. I've heard mixed things about this. I love the premise, so I'm hoping that it lives up to the hype because there is quite a bit of hype around this. I'm very aware that the romance has been an issue for quite a lot of people. So I'll see how it goes. Hopefully it lives up to it, the expectations. The next book I have is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is one that I don't know an awful lot about. I've just seen a lot of people say that it's a really good read. I know that a woman comes home to find that her husband has murdered their son and kidnapped their daughter. So she has to he head out into a dying land, basically, because her basic supplies are limited. And that's really all I know. Like I said, I haven't looked too much into this, so I'm hoping to be surprised with it. The next book I have is The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad. Yes. So this is set in 19th century London and we follow Valrock, who is a shop owner and he is a member of an anarchist group and he's a secret agent for a foreign country and he becomes involved in a scheme to blow up Greenwich Observatory and there's consequences because of that. I read that it's inspired by a true story so I'm always into stuff like that so yeah this one should be good. Next one I have is Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I've already read some of this. I read a couple I think a couple of chapters I think it was at secondary school years and years ago. This seems like one of the shorter books yeah it's like 300 like less than 300 pages which I'm led to believe is quite a small amount for Charles Dickens. So, th so this is set in an industrial town where the children of the town have the greatest misfortune to be taught by Mr. Gradgrind, who is stern and generally just not a very nice person. Entertainment and lightheartedness is in short supply in this town. Luckily they have the help of Sissy Duke, she is the daughter of a circus clown and she makes everybody's lives a little bit brighter. I should be interested to see what I think of this because I don't actually remember an awful lot about it. Like I said, it was only a couple of chapters, so we'll see how this one goes. The next book I have is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. I keep seeing an awful lot about this. Um, I wasn't going to pick it up, but it was on offer for like £3 for, from Waterstones. 
it's in the sale and I don't even think you can get a pen from Waterstones for three pound. So this, this story starts off in New York in the 60s. We follow the gold siblings, there's four of them. One night they sneak out and they go to a... What's the word? They go to a travelling psychic who... So years after that night it follows them and how they deal with that information, whether they choose to embrace it or run from it or try and cheat it. That said I've heard a lot of good things about this so I've got high hopes. The next book I have is Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Um, I've seen the film of this a couple of years ago now. I don't remember an awful lot about it apart from that Hugh Grant played a cannibal in it which was definitely an experience. All I really know about the actual story is that it's set across several timelines like far in the past and far in the future. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to understand this book. I've been led to believe that it's very confusing so I'll see how we get on with this. I'm hoping I manage to get through it and understand it. The next book I have is The Creakers by Tom Fletcher. I picked this up because my partner is a massive McFly fan. McFly aren't going anymore so Tom Fletcher mainly writes children's books now. This is aimed at quite a young audience but I got a sort of borrower's vibe from it. So it's about these little creatures that live under your bed and come out when you're asleep. This would be a really cool book to read if you've got young children and also the cover's really awesome. So I can pass that on. The next book I have is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I read My Cousin Rachel a couple of well, more than a couple of years ago and I don't remember an awful lot about it. I don't think I appreciated it enough at the time. I read Wuthering Heights recently and I absolutely loved it. So this was suggested to me by a couple of people actually because I was looking for something similar in that sort of spooky gothic -y type. So the story follows Rebecca who takes a trip to the south of France. She falls in love with a widower called Maxim de Winter and he proposes, they get married, she moves in with him and the house is almost haunted with the remnants of his dead wife. So I am super ready for this. I'm thinking it might be one of the books that I pick up next because I'm just ready. I'm ready for it. The next book I have is China Mountain Zhang, I think, by Maureen F. McHugh. So this story is set in a future where America has gone through a communist revolu revolution, so it is now dominated by China. Zhang is a construction engineer living in New York. I believe he's gay and mixed race, um, so it's about him finding his place in this brave new world and dealing with a world that disproves of his heritage and his sexual identity. The main reason I picked this up is because it's a it's a sci-fi masterworks, so I'll see how I get on with this one. The next book I have is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. This is another one that I'm planning on reading on October. Um, I haven't read any other Stephen King books, so this will be my first. So I've never seen the film of this because I've always been deathly afraid of horror of horror films. I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to that sort of thing. But I don't mind reading horror things. So I don't actually know an awful lot about it, I'm not gonna lie. But we follow the Creeds, uh, they move into an old house in Maine, everything's going great, everything appears to be great, but behind the house there's a path that leads to a really old woods and things just start going wrong. October, I'm coming for this one. The next book I have is Children of Odin, Nordic Gods and Heroes by Heydrake, Padrake, Colum, Colum. I'm gonna go with Padrake Colum. That sounds like a name. So a couple of months ago I read Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. I used to read quite a bit of Norse Mythology when I was younger. Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology book was the first book that I picked up about it in about 10 or 15 years. So I wanted something a bit more in depth because Neil Gaiman's book is good but it's quite simple and it's great for beginners or anybody just looking for a gateway into it. It not only covers the Norse myths but it also talks about the Volsung saga which I have listened to on a podcast, I think it was the Myth Myths and Legends podcast and it was really good but I tend to retain more information by reading rather than listening 
I don't actually, I don't think I retain any information by listening. So I'm looking forward to a bit more of in-depth information. Next I have another graphic novel. This is volume two of A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I picked this up for free in a charity shop because it, it was on, there was an offer going on, any three for two, and I didn't know the offer was on and this one was just there that I didn't notice. So even though it's the second one, I'm really pleased I got it because, I mean, you can't argue with free. So I'm going to pick up the first one at some point. Next I have The Career of Evil by Roger Galbraith. Galbraith? I have no idea how you say her name. Obviously this is JK Rowling. I haven't read any of the other in this series and I, I don't really know an awful lot about it. I presume you have to read them in order because I think this is the third book. Not going to start this one yet but it was only a pound so I didn't really want to pass it up. All I know is that we follow a detective and that's about it. I don't really want to read too much about this one because obviously it's the third book in the series, I think. So I'm going to leave that one at that. Next I have Beyond Black by Hilary Mantel. Hilary Mantel? Hilary Mantel. Hilary Mantel. I want to read Wolf Hall, but I've heard it's very dense. So I thought, I saw this and I thought I'll pick it up, see what a writing's like, and then I'll go from there. So this follows Alison Hart and her assistant Colette. Um, Alison is a medium and she passes on messages to the to the dead but unfortunately she's plagued by her own spirits who haunt her and affect her negatively. I'll be interested to see how it goes plot wise but it seems pretty creepy this might be another October read I'm not entirely sure yet. So that's everything there's actually quite a few there but then I have read four of them so <clears throat> I guess it's not too bad. I think I'm slowly getting better my voice is going a bit now because I've got the beginnings of a cold and I'm running out of space on my camera. So I'm going to leave at that. Like I said, I apologise for butchering all the plots and all the author names. Hopefully I'll have another video for you soon. I think I want to do a Unpopular Opinions book tag because I feel like as if you can learn a lot about somebody from their unpopular opinions and it's one of my favourite videos to actually watch. So in the next couple of days, I might film that. I'll see how it goes. But until then, have a good week. Don't work too hard. And I'll see you next time.